million dollar question because uh, I remember talking to um, a much older relative when the quiet quitting thing was happening. I think the, I think it was like 2021. It was around the time I was researching again, career remix where you'll see a lot of these video recommendations from, cause I it was kind of my deep dive into the corporate world as well as why people quit and what we can do about it as far as individuals, not, not necessarily for, for organizations. Organizations will figure themselves out. I'm more worried about the individual at this point, or at least I was a couple of years ago with Career Remix. And I remember talking to an uh, older relative. And they're like, yeah, all these people are quitting. And I was like, yeah, a lot of people are quitting. It was, it was a great, great resignation, right? It feels so far back. It feels like ages ago, but it was just a couple of years ago. And I was like, yeah, they're calling it the great resignation. And my relative was like, well, how can they just quit? What are they going to do? And I was like, I don't know. Like, that's what I'm trying to, I was like, I'm researching a book right now. I'm trying to find out. Now for the older generations and the folks that are a little bit more conservative, I'll put it like that, not politically, but more um, not necessarily used to taking the same types of risks. I'm a very young Gen X, very old Gen Y. And so from our generation down, we're not used to that same stability that older generations are used to. So the conversation was very radical with my older relative who was well into, into the uh, baby boomer stage. And so for him, it was like, this is radical. What, how do you take care of things? For us, myself, and perhaps you, if you're, if you're, in the, um, if you're younger or around my age, we're like, well, we're really uncomfortable here. There's a mess of opportunities out there. And I'm not going to be miserable for another day. That sounds fantastic. I've followed that model a few times. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. And you still got your rent and your mortgage. In my case, I got a family. So you still got your family. You still got student loan payments, which are actually going to start activating here again in the United States over in the upcoming weeks. Whatever your stuff is, you still got the same stuff that you had when you had the job that you said you hated. So it's important to know how you can take care of yourself when you quit. One strong way to do that is to start building that runway beyond just, I'm going to put this money away and that can take care of me. Instead, it ends up being building whatever path you're going to take. Again, you have that vision and you have the runway. So you got some money saved up, fantastic. That's a good start. But that vision, unless you're doing something, that vision's not going to help you. It's just not. Oh, I have this great idea. Fantastic. But, you know, your, your rent's due next week. So that great idea isn't going to take care of the landlord, right? My favorite book when it comes to side hustles, a lot of favorite books today, which I always get happy, happy at uh, recommending my favorite books. Because sometimes the books are very good. And other times it's like, no, it stays on my shelf. I always recommend it. If you want to learn about side hustles, Maybe you should get the book called Side Hustles. Shout out to Chris Gillenbaugh. He actually had a book that just came out called Gonzo Capitalism. I'm just getting into it, but congrats on the book launch and everything. Side Hustle, fantastic book. Came out several years ago. Still extremely relevant. It came out well before the pandemic. What I love about the book Side Hustle is that even though it looks thick, it's extremely practical. Chris is a practical guy. He's like, okay, you start with this. You start with that. You start with that. This is how you do it. Very straightforward. He also has a podcast called, I think it's called Side Hustle Podcast. You can uh, look it up on Spotify or what have you. And he talks, I think it's a thousand episodes, literally a thousand episodes. I'm not, I'm not, no hyperbole here, where he talks to different people about the side hustle they've created. And every single episode, super short, like 10 minutes long, is about a side hustle. This book is like the, <clears throat> excuse me, another version of that. Yeah, Chris is awesome. But it's like another version of that. And it talks about that. In fact, the book came out before the podcast. Side hustles are great for two, two big reasons. The first one is if it's done well, then, you know, you have some extra money. Fantastic. We can all use extra money, particularly in this economy. But that's always been the case. We can use extra money. The other thing that side hustle does is that it helps you determine whether that's the path you want to take. 
So I'll give you a, a meta meta example of it. Not not Zuckerberg, but meta is in the true 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 definition of the word. I started this show almost three years ago. Bring your worth TV. It started on the side. I was curious about things, as I mentioned towards the top of the show. I felt like there was a little bit of not misinformation, but I felt like I could add to the conversation based on my own experiences and years as you know, coaching hundreds of people. I'm like, I need to add to this conversation because there's information out there that might get you guys going in the wrong direction. I want to serve y'all better. And the pandemic had just started, so I wasn't on the road as much. It started something on the side. And then as more of y'all started to come in and I started to feel better as far as how this might be another path to serving, then I started investing more. I got the, the much bigger, bigger light here. But if you go to my very first episode, again, 337 episodes before, they looked like I was in a dark room. But that's because I spent like literally zero money starting the show. And then I started adding more and more. With this being a side hustle, then it allowed me to figure out, is this actually what I want to do? Before I quit journalism, before I stop coaching people, all these things that I would never do, but I'm being extreme about it. Before I turn off all the other spigots that are actually part of my financial engine, how about I test drive it? It's almost like um, I love traveling. It's almost like when you vacation somewhere or you travel somewhere and you get to like the rental car place and they're like, well, I know you asked for a Camry, but there's a GT over here. And, you know, we'll hook you up. You can get it for the same price. Even if the GT or whatever, no shade towards the GT, but even if it sucks, you're going to have it for like three days. I had a friend of mine that actually rented a, a Tesla and realized they didn't like Teslas, but they only had it for like two, three days. Right. And they're like, no, nah, this, this, this isn't the way for me. Okay. They didn't drop, what is it, 60, 70,000? I think the price just dropped. They didn't drop all that money and say, I'm going to get a Tesla and then have to go sell it. No, they just tried it out. Sad hustles are like that. There's certain things that I love to do, as I talked about in previous episodes, that will never get monetized, that y'all will never know about, that will never turn into a book. Like, <laughs> like my friends know about it, my family knows about it, but like, y'all don't even know about it. Those aren't side hustles, those are hobbies. But there's certain side hustles, certain ideas, such as, again, the Bring Your Worth TV show, that it's like suddenly there's, as of this recording, there's 18,000 of y'all that are coming through to have these conversations. I couldn't have saw that three years ago. But I didn't say, I'm going to spend $50,000 on equipment and rent the street. No, no, this is my office. When I'm working, you see this view. Or <laughs> I see this view. You wouldn't see this view because you're not in my office. But you know, this is the view. When you coach with me, you can learn more about that at damebrown.net. This is the view that you see. There's nothing fancy about this. That's because it's still growing. And then it's going to be one day, maybe in a few weeks, maybe over the next year, where suddenly the camera is going to get better. Suddenly the lighting will be organized in a certain way where I'll look like some of the fancier folks that have TV shows. But you have to go on that journey to figure out what level works for you. And there's certain side hustles that you realize you don't want to do full time. And it's okay to have that experience. And that's an excellent, excellent point. Side hustles are a great litmus test for pivoting. <clears throat> exactly. Jenny talks about that too. Excuse me. And again, the eponymous pivot. Excellent title. Like, <laughs> I'm so mad she got that title. Like, it's, it's fantastic. SEO ready, right? But she talks about that in pivot as well. If you start with something small, and you don't lean everything on there, then you have the opportunity to see if it will grow. I talked about that in the complete Bring Your Worth collection, again, available this October, next month. Can't believe it's next month already. Next month, you can check it out again in the links below. But I talk about that. To paraphrase, you don't want to put too much pressure on new ideas because they're as light and as flaky as a Parisian croissant. I'm really into Parisian food, been over there a couple of times. But if you think about it like a croissant, you put the pressure of your mortgage and or your rent and whatever on top of that, it's going to fall apart. But if you're like, hey, I'm going to treat this lightly. Let's see what happens. And if you have that see what happens attitude, which might be difficult if you're ready to quit. I own that. I get it. But if you have that attitude, 
you have a much higher chance of actually having that vision be fulfilled, that pathway, so you can sustain yourself. I did a keynote for Bedroom Candy. Shout out to them. It's um, a company that actually sells different intimacy products, but all the folks that are within there are individualized entrepreneurs. So they asked me to come through. Pandemic had just hit. So it had to be like a few years ago. I want to say summer of 2020. Love doing the keynote for them. It's now available for y'all. How to have a side hustle keynote. If you want to understand why side hustles are important, go deep into this. I think the talk is about an hour long. I want to serve y'all as much as possible. So I got paid to do the keynote. It was exclusively for a little while. Now I'm giving it to y'all. Soak up as much game as possible because, again, this is the reason why I started the show. Bring Your Worth TV, the intention is to help you as a side hustler, or a solopreneur, or otherwise a non-traditional entrepreneur, so you can avoid some of the pitfalls of you pivoting into a different direction with your career. As I say in Career Remix, the job is theirs, but the career is ours. So we have the power when it comes to our career. Working with side hustles and building from there, I think, is one of the best ways to do it. All right, so that is our discussion on, sorry, I had some tech issues for a second. Side hustle to full time. Thanks so much for coming through. Remember for the rest of this month, every weekday, you're gonna catch me here, 1 11 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, Vegas time. I think we have another 18, 19 episodes for the remainder of September. Please come through, join me tomorrow. Join all of us tomorrow beginning freelance writing, been a freelance writer for longer than, it's getting to the point where if I say the number, it's gonna be embarrassing, I've been doing it for a while. <laughs> Please come through if you want more game or insight about that, or if you have specific questions about starting your freelance journalism career. My focus is on freelance writing, but a lot of stuff we're gonna be talking about tomorrow, and I'm sure some of the comments coming in will be applicable to other freelance creatives, uh, whether you're uh, creative, creative, more on the advertising side, you're a creative copywriter, which also is spill over into advertising. Even if you're a creative photographer, my main thing is writing. So that's what the focus is going to be on tomorrow. But I think there's some insight and game in there. And if you like the Bring Away Show, be sure and subscribe. It's I think it'll always be free. So I think I can say it's always going to be free. It's at bringyourworth.tv. It's free. It comes to you regularly. And there'll be a lot of bonus episodes this month. You don't want to miss it. There's going to be some great conversations like we had today. Until next time, remember that you can always bring your worth and you can always build from now. Take care.